What's up everyone, Lance Hedrick here, and today we're going to look at what I see as like the three main styles of rosettas. All right, so the rosetta. There's a lot of, you know, talk about where the Rosetta first came. Uh, mostly it's attributed back to David Schomer up in up at Espresso Vivace in Seattle. Um, it, it really starts with, uh, you know, him pouring the heart. And then one day, you know, he said he was on a, a, like a food truck type thing, his coffee truck, and w cars were coming by really quickly. It would shake it. And one day he was pouring a heart and was shaking on it and made some ripples. And that gave him the idea for the rippled heart, which eventually turned into a Rosetta. Now, that is anecdotal. Who knows if that's actually accurate? That's what I've heard. But now there have been a lot of ways of pouring rosettas. You have a Rosetta Revolution. You have the slow Zetta. You have a slow Rosetta. You've got like an Australian style classic Rosetta. You've got uh, like the Japanese style Rosetta, like Junichi Yamaguchi. You've got all these different types of Rosettas. And it's all depending on your specific aesthetic preference. So the first thing we're gonna look at is that Rosetta Revolution. We're gonna look at the classic Rosetta, which is still very popular in like Australia. And we're gonna look at what I refer to as like the Japanese style Rosetta, which is what Junichi Yamaguchi made famous uh, like a decade or so ago which is just a really fine line type of rosetta that doesn't have much of a stalk. It's kind of sitting in one place and rippling and coming back just a little bit. Sometimes it's a partial pull through, sometimes a full pull through. But we're gonna look about at those three different ones and how we can change the flow rate. But first you're asking, well, how do we even pour a rosetta? How does that work? Well, if you haven't already seen it, please look at my how to ripple video right there. Look, it's like right there, okay? Uh, sound effects, always. So take a look at that and understand how you ripple forward because all a Rosetta is, this is all it is. I'm going to just demystify the, ro the Rosetta for you. All the Rosetta is, is when you're pouring, you're pouring forward, just like the winged base. And then instead of stopping, you're going to speed up. You're going to speed up your flow. So the milliliters per second that the milk is coming out of your pitcher, you're going to speed the flow up and you're going to ripple backwards. And what happens there is you're rippling forward and it's just like that fat thing I showed you. When you're rippling forward, it goes in and it crushes those that base into the stalk that you're about to make. You ripple forward, it goes in, and then you ripple back. And it's just like my, my roll right there went around my hand. The base lines of that rosetta will wrap around the stalk as you're escaping. It's kind of like I always like to talk about Indiana Jones running. Indiana Jones is running, and then he slides uh, un, uh, into that divot as the boulder rolls over him. A in the same way, whenever you're you're rippling down, like in my ripple video that I linked up in the heavens just a second ago, when you're rippling forward, you're going to see those lines that you initially started wrapping around, and they're closing their mouth on you. And you're like, oh no, I got an Indiana Jones out of here. So you got to ripple back to Indiana Jones out. That's all Rosetta is, okay? And if I said that and you're like, well, I still don't get it, you probably didn't watch the rippling video, which you need to watch so you get the idea of ripples down. Now, of course, the reason I said the flow rate must increase is because as you're pouring, viscosity is rising up. The viscosity is rising, right? Um, I don't know what I was going for there, but I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you're happy. So when you're pouring, you're rippling forward and the viscosity is raising, so you gotta pour faster and faster. And then as those lines are catching up to you, you have to ripple back through them with a faster flow rate because at that point, it is concretized a lot. Not cementized, which we all know I am flubbed up and said in the milk steaming video, which is right here. Um, how cool it would be if like filming it, I did that perfectly. I hope I did. Um, but yeah, so uh, it, while it's concretizing, you have to pour faster so that the foam is actually still malleable, right? All right, so those three, let's go ahead and look at them. I'm gonna pour them and I'm gonna discuss them so that you have an idea of what the three types of rosettas are. So I'm actually gonna start with the classic rosetta since it is classic. And then I'm gonna do the Japanese style rosetta because that, uh, at least to my knowledge, was kind of the next thing that really showed up. And then that rosetta revolution, which I'm going to be using the Starbucks pitcher for, all right? All right. Okay. All right, so this is the classical Rosetta. The idea here is you start further down in the cup, right about here. So here you go. This is more of a classic Rosetta. You start further down in the cup. It doesn't have the ability really to wrap all the way up. And you get some nice little hollow leaves with a really thin kind of truncated, or not truncated, but a thin type of stalk down the middle. 
So you have them wrapping midway from the rosetta. This is a very common type of pour in Australia where, again, you start deeper in the cup, you're rippling. Uh, normally, the way I pour, which is closer to the Rosetta Revolution, is with one shape uh, pours, you start at the top, right? And then this is going to wrap all the way to the top, so all these would be hitting the top. But with this classic style of Rosetta, you're starting deeper in the cup, you're rippling, it curls up about halfway, and you have a nice, uh, cleanly separated base to the Rosetta itself. So this is one style of pouring that Rosetta, and we're going to show it again right now in slow motion. This is more of that Japanese style that Junichi kind of pioneered, where you're doing a lot of lines, so I'm using a thinner spouted pitcher. So not the greatest example, but you get the idea here where you're just sitting rippling up here and you're allowing the lines to just keep coming out and keep coming out. So as you see, the stalk is not as prominent in this type of pour. Uh, and let me remind you, I don't ever use handled pours, so I'm not actually mad at this. Uh, but you see there are a lot of lineations. There's not many hollow leaves. You just sit there and you're, you're uh, going back and forth quickly. You're not really allowing the flow to occur. You're being more mechanical about it and you're just rippling back and forth and back and forth. So as you see, this side by side with that more classical one, they're two completely different styles of rosetta. You have the base kind of wrapping to the middle with some hollow leaves there. Then you have this one, which is a lot of fine lines uh, as you keep going up. So it kind of makes a circle almost. So for this last one, I'm gonna use just a little thicker milk. And it's because when you're doing a heavy flow to perform the revolution type four, uh, you're relying a lot on a heavy flow. And if you have too thin, of milk, you won't be able to achieve that, those really nice thick hollow uh, lines with the nice hollow, or the nice thick lines with the nice hollow leaves. All right, so just a couple, uh, just a smidge more air, not really much at all. Nothing drastic. All right, and this again, I'm using the Starbucks pitcher. Since it's so big, I like to steam into a smaller pitcher uh, because the steam one, it's difficult to reach into it. All right. So here is that more revolution style pour. And here we go. from above, you have really thick lines with really hollow leaves right there and very few ripples. So I'm gonna put this beside the other two so you kind of see the difference side by side by side. So we have the classical where the base is wrapping up essentially midway with a nice thin stalk right there. The Japanese style where you're doing a lot of ripples and you're just essentially forcing as many lines as you can. Then you have kind of the American style Rosetta Revolution which is some big, nice, thick, flowy lines. Now, for these pours, I use just these pitchers right here. Ideally, for like that fine line, you want a thinner spout. That's gonna allow you to release uh, less foam per, per, um, per pendulum swing. So the less foam you can do, the thinner lines you can create, the more lines you can create. Now for the classical, I used a round spout like this one. And this allows me, I just prefer round spout to be honest with you. You can probably use either one of these to uh, create that type of rosetta. I just prefer to use this and I'm used to handle this. And then for the revolution, you can do this and I do it frequently with a round spout with this one, but I really like the uh, swinging motion. As you can see, I have a little bit of milk left in this. Actually, I'm gonna pour it from this angle. As you see, see how it wobbles back and forth? 
So that nice wide flow of it just wobbling back and forth is going to really help you um, create those big thick fat lines with a lot of foam coming out because this spout is so wide, there's a lot of foam coming out. The more narrow the spout, the less foam comes out uh, milliliters per second. Does that make sense? So the, small, the less milliliters per second, the less foam's coming out. All right, so with this wider spout, how it's almost flush with the, the curve is going to allow a really heavy pendulum. So if you use something like this, you have to really control and go slowly. If you go too fast, it's gonna be off. If you go too quick with the ripples, it's gonna be over here while you're over here and it's gonna be really wonky and you won't get those nice flowy lines. So with this, I kinda, I grab it like so and I just controllably, I actually don't, I don't actually um, uh, ripple like this. I kind of move my whole arm. So um, those are like the three kind of styles of Rosetta that's, that I see. Obviously, there are even more variations of these. There's like the slow to row, which Nicely Able out in California created, which is a slow base. And then you ripple quickly. Um, and you have different types of slow Zettas, which is doing the, for, the form of a Rosetta. So rippling forward and rippling back, but doing it like so. So instead of rippling forward and rippling back, you're doing the same amount of forward and the same amount of back, but you're not rippling. You're just moving the pitcher side to side. So literally, the base would be about two side to sides, and the going backwards would be about two side to sides. Then you have a slow Rosetta, which Chris Lynn MG is famous for doing. He drops in, and he just traces a Rosetta, essentially. So that's a slow Rosetta, as opposed to a slow Zetta, right? So anyway, there are a lot of different forms of these, and maybe in a future video, we'll go over some of those slow flows. But just know with slow flow, you're not actually pouring slowly, you're pouring faster. So I know it's confusing. The slow part is the fact you're not rippling. So for these, go watch the ripple video, get your ripples down, start with a rippled heart. Once you have the rippled heart, all you've got to do is ripple backwards instead of finishing the heart. The stalk uses the least amount of milk. It's the base you want to develop. So typically on Rosetta Revolutions, you do about five back and forths for the base. You do about three back and forths for the stalk. For the classical, you're doing about eight back and forths for the base and about eight for the stalk. For the Japanese style, it's how many you can get in there. I didn't get that many because I'm not very good at that style. I also haven't poured it in years. But that's the idea. That's the little breakdown of the three styles that I kind of see. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Please like and subscribe this video if you enjoyed it. I'm happy to do more Latte Art tutorials. And if needed, I can break this down further. But I'm confident if you watch the How to Ripple video, transitioning to a Rosetta will be very easy. You just have to remember, ripple forward with less milk that's being dispensed and then increase the amount of milk for the stalk coming back depending on the style of rosetta you're doing again i have uh, all these uh, all these pours i did today were both in real time and we did a slow-mo one for each so just go back and watch my slow-mo from the above angle and that'll really help you see what exactly it is i'm doing at each point you can pause the video you can ask questions here in the comments uh, i may not be able to get to them all but maybe someone else will be able to help um, as well. Anyway, thanks again for watching. Check out my other latte art tutorials. If you're new to latte art, I'm stoked to be able to provide this information for you. And stoked is an understatement. I'm so incredibly excited. I'm like Jesse Spano with those caffeine pills, pills on Saved by the Bell. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. Except I'm not as emotional. Um, unless y'all skewer me in the comments, then I'm probably going to cry and, and have my wife hold me uh, to sleep at night. Um, anyway, Again, thank you. Here's another long ending, uh, y'all rock, and I'm gonna drink the rest of this milk. Wow, that's sweet. All right, cheers.